Good morning, folks. It is Thursday. It is so I get so excited to uh, kind of talk to you guys like this. It's really cool. So, uh, what's on tap for today? Uh, the Sandvik guys coming by. It's so weird. You can get test tools or demo tools. Um, it kind of feels sh shaky to me though because you, you're kind of supposed to accept them and pay for them, but but if you don't like them, you can return them, which I'm, I'm not a big fan of like buying something with the idea that you're just gonna return it. Um, but I guess the idea is that we, it, if you test it, they kind of want to be there so that they can help, which that's what I'm excited for. Holy cow, um, to have a guy, I mean, literally I've never had someone, really never had someone sit there and help me cook up a speeds and fees like this. I've gotten a lot of help from you know, Carl at Lakeshore over the phone or calling folks or reaching out, but kind of curious to see what that's like. I've got a program, um, one production type run and one prototype one-off for a guy. I had a question for you fabricating type guys out there. We've made a bunch of one inch tubing, 16 gauge stands and tables like this. We've left it all bare. And I wanna know, can we paint it? Should we paint it? I don't think it's going to rust. It doesn't get that humid here, but I kind of want to, I wanna be able to paint it. I guess I'll put it that way, both for the stuff here. And we send some stuff out like that. If I had a powder coat oven, which we'd like to build one, but it's on the list, I would consider that. But is there a, what, what do you guys do that work in fabrication shops? Can you wet paint it or like just leave a, a corner of the shop set up with a HVLP gun and just hit it with some basic primer type stuff? I actually would really like to know. Um, oh, going back to Sandvik, thank you to everybody for all the insights on lathe tooling. Um, it is, overwhelming it, mostly in a good way but oh my god there's just so much out there there's so many great tools technologies insert styles it just it is a little bit mind-blowing um, to keep it simple I want to bring up a couple of things first of all thank you to everybody that mentioned that the height does really matter and this is our um, now I'm calling it old because we're getting rid of it um, it, CNMG insert holder for the Tormach lathe. And what it matters is you do adjust this little screw here and you don't put much, so you don't tighten that down. It has to do with basically the seat depth or something. But um, I'm gonna just say that this is BS and get rid of this thing because this idea that there's a form of skilled labor involved in setting this correctly, to me is just another source for frustration and error. Um, basically, if you don't have it set correctly, the distance between the spacer and the insert is no good. And someone had mentioned that these are th this um, insert holder style is is old stuff. They don't use these anymore. So you can still use this negative insert in a better holder, which is what I would do. Except we're getting rid of these negative inserts on our lathe for now because we've been having great results from positive inserts. And I'll explain quickly with this piece of aluminum here. See how that tool is dived down, it's pointed down? That's a negative insert. Take a look at this one. This one is almost actually, it's positive, but it almost looks neutral. You know, positive would be more, you know, kind of up like that. So the way to think about it, it's kind of weird. A negative insert is coming in it basically the wrong direction. Like you would never try to do a hand tool operation coming at it the wrong way. So the cool thing is there's stronger inserts. They take more horsepower because there's more cutting pressure. That The trade-off though is again, um, it's a stronger insert. So you know, anyone with big, big machines or production is gonna want to look at negative inserts. Positive inserts are freer cutting. They have that natural sort of positive shear angle. So that's awesome, awesome for us. Uh, I don't care about the insert uh, strength right now. I do, I'm sorry, I do care, but I care more about good speeds and feeds and production um, cut quality off of the equipment that we've got and positives are the answer. The other sort of bummer of a drawback is the um, nature of a negative insert means you can get um, four edges per insert. So there's two on the top and then you can flip it over, which is really cool. You know, the same amount of carbide, but you get two more inserts. The positives, you can't flip over because of the shape. Oh, oh well, for me, that's still a no-brainer. Uh, what else is going on? 
we actually have a guy coming in Monday from the local machining program in the high school to, to uh, interview for an internship. So I'm actually really excited for that. I, I think it'd be I think it'll be really good. We've got enough going on where I can give him some work to do. Um, you know, regular work around the shop, cleaning up and organizing, um, running and tending the machine. And then I've got some projects that uh, I'm excited to see. I got to get an idea of their skill level, um, but to run with and, and see where they go. And um, I want to find that balance of pushing them, um, giving them, you know, interesting stuff and learning, but they've got to do some work too. Um, what else did I want to mention to you guys? Oh, I'm also going to redo that rough and ream test today. Thank you for all the really good feedback. Um, I, I knew you don't peck reamers um, subconsciously. I think I did it because I felt like there was um, too much material left to ream. I know some folks said that there wasn't. I need to measure that. It was supposed to be a 735 hole, and I think it was wider. Uh, but we're going to redo that with some good feedback and, and let you guys know how that came. Otherwise, I'm actually taking tomorrow off and heading down to Louisville with some buddies for the NRA convention. So I will see you guys next week.